Okay. Now we're going to talk about the processor. Um, they don't offer a 2.8 i7, so that's, I guess that's kind of exclusive to Apple maybe. They do offer a 2.6 and a 3.0. So, I mean, they're both about the same distance from 2.8. So it really just depends on what you want to price this as. Do you want to price this as being just a little bit faster than the iMac? Or do you want to price it being just a little bit slower than the Now, to be honest here, a 2.66 GHz compared with Apple's 2.8 i7, that 0.14 wouldn't really make that much of a difference. You might see a slight um, slight performance boost from the iMac, but it won't be really significant. So, I guess you could say the anywhere isn't that far behind. It's only by 0.14 gigahertz. So, moving on. iMac. If you price it to be just a little bit faster than the iMac to be a 3.0, you're gonna have to add 500 fucking dollars. So, I'm assuming, for argument's sake, we're gonna pick the cheapest 2.66 quad core, but just keep in mind it's a 2.66 compared to the Apple's 2.8. Okay, we're going to want Windows 7 Premium. We'll keep that because it's included in the price. Let's get a GPU that is close to the 4850 and the closest one is the ATI 5870. Now actually, the 4850 and the 5870 are pretty much in different classes. The 5870 just came out and supporting DX11, where the 4850 isn't supporting DX11. Now, as you can see on the Alienware or on your video, the standard video card for the Alienware was the GTX 260, right? Not the 260 core 216 edition, just the original two GTX 260. Now, as you, as you can see here on the benchmarks on provided by Guru 3D. The green is the GTX 260, whereas the light blue, as you can see right here, is the 4850. They're pretty much about the same performance, about two frames apart. So, to make it more of a fair comparison, I would have kept the GTX 260 as the Alienware's video card, rather than the 5870, which is way beyond the 4850's limit of performance, you could say. So, anyways, which is significantly better than the 4850, but the iMac has a significantly faster clock speed on its i7. So it kind of evens out there as far as that goes. I mean, not really, but not technically, but you know what I'm saying here. So I'll pick the single one gig ATI Radeon 5870 to include. Okay, we'll keep it at three gigs of RAM because it's included in the price. Now the iMac has a terabyte serial ATA drive, so we're going to want to add a terabyte hard drive there. We'll continue on. No second hard drive. It's got a single CD player, I think. Let's go back to that. Yep, okay, that's right. The DVD burner. Do you want a sound blaster card? No, I'm going to assume no. Now does this have we should add this because the iMac has the uh, in capability and out capability of the DVI port. You can use it as a display or a VES amount or you know HDMI. Now you mentioned in the video, in your video, if the anyone should get a sound card or not, and you said it should. For me, I don't think it should, especially when you're especially when you're comparing to the iMac, because I as you can see here, let me find it. The iMac doesn't have a sound card. It's just it's just a, a standard audio internal stereo speakers. Nothing too fancy. So to be fair, the anyone should just keep the original integrated audio, which is still pretty sweet. It's a seven point seven point one, I believe. Let me check it real quick. Let's see tech specs. <clears throat> find the audio if I could find it here you go internal high definition 7.1 standard which isn't that bad 
Now you've mentioned that the iMac could do dual displays if wanted. Anywhere could do the same thing. The GTX 260 that it comes with has dual DVI ports, which you could do dual monitor setup if you wanted to. Now, like in your video, if you selected the 5870, which also comes with a HDMI port, I believe. Let me. I'll show you right here. 5870. Let's see what we got here. One HDMI port, one display port, and two DVIs, which is pretty sweet, as you can see here in the picture. So either way, the the Aurora could do dual monitors if you wanted to, or HDMI. You can hook it up as a TV. So that's another added bonus over this. So you already got to think. Look at all the extras you're getting with the iMac already. Now let's add a monitor here, a 24 inch UltraShark, which is the only thing available as an option that even comes close to the IMAX quality display. I'm not sure if this is an IPS display, I don't know if it's LED backlit, I don't know, but we're going to pick it.